Hi, in this video I want to show you an alternative way of calculating the particle collisions that we created in the last video. Let's go! I just downloaded the latest Geometry Nodes simulation experimental build. It is from December 10th, 2022. If you don't have Blender Launcher, just go to the address shown on screen and download it from there. And this is it, 3.5 alpha, and this is the one with the simulation nodes built in. So let's just open the file from the last tutorial. Here we are back again. Um, we can already see that there are two red nodes. Let's see if anything works. Something's happening, but it's not working anymore. They changed something with the simulation nodes, but we can just delete those and put them back in here. And now here it says add this first, so let's do that. Okay, so we have the output, shift A, input, and then we have this background thing again, showing us that this is somehow connected from the input to the output. And everything in between is sort of in this simulation loop. Oh, of course we have to connect this also, and then we should have some geometry and yep, it's still working. So first of all, I'm going to turn down the density to 0.1 just to have fewer particles. Okay, looking good. And now down here we have our collision calculation and I'm gonna move this to the side and we're gonna create our new collision calculation right here. So let's think about this real quick. Each of our particles has a velocity vector the speed of the particle is the length of the vector and of course they all have a direction which in our case is just straight down. In the last tutorial we calculated if the particle enters this sort of threshold area and if it does we use the reflection vector based on the normal and then that gives us our re reflection vector and then we even scaled that down a little bit to simulate sort of um, absorption of energy. Okay we can greatly simplify this whole calculation here by using the ray cast node. It's a built-in node in geometry nodes and we can use it in our simulation uh, by simply casting a ray using our velocity vector straight down towards our collision object. And if that ray um, calculates a hit for us, it automatically gives us the normal vector on the position of the hit and then we can do our you know a reflection vector and all of that so let's see how that works first we're gonna just search for raycast the raycast node needs a target geometry and for that we're just gonna bring in our diamond again set it to relative because we moved it up a little so that will be the target now the particle raycasts a node in a certain ray direction. What's the direction? Well, that will be our named attribute called V, you know, our velocity vector. And how long is this ray length? You know, since th this will be 100 meters now, so really, really long. We only want to see if this vector hits our target object if it's inside of the actual length of this vector. So we just take V and take the length of it. Vector, math, plug that in here. Length, okay, that's the ray length. Oh, it took that out again. So let's do ray direction, ray length. And now this ray cast node for each particle Ray calculates the velocity or uses the velocity vector essentially in its correct length and checks if it hits our target object. And if it does, it gives us a is hit true. It gives us the hit position that we really don't need, but it also gives us the hit normal. So we can, um, we don't have to do any of this. So how to get the normal here. Um, this is all done by this single node. So what do we want? Well, we again, we need a switch node. If the ray hits our target object, we're gonna take our hit normal. We need to uh, vector math, calculate the reflection vector of V reflected on the normal. And we take that. So we have to switch this to vector. And when we do that, we have to connect it up again. So if we hit 
we take the reflection vector and if we don't hit we just take well the original v vector and this would be the output that we can plug into our gravity here so let's just add a reroute cut this and plug this in here so instead of taking this output from this group we're taking our new output here and one thing I forgot, the reflection vector should also be scaled down a little, right? So we plug in another vector math and set this to scale, where is it? Here, and do something like 0.7 maybe. Cool, um, can we simplify all of these noodles here? Maybe we just put a reroute in here. It should be doing essentially the same thing. Let's see, go back hit as the space bar is it working yeah, it's doing something cool yep it's reflecting now to see this a little bit better let me just pl plug in a cube here move that down to here hide the diamond and then instead of what is this called cube one instead of the diamond we just use cube one now for the collision let's see if it still works Go back to frame one, a space bar for play, and let's see, yep, looking good. And then of course we have our max H that kills off the particles. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Now let's zoom in really far and see how this actually works. And I'm just gonna use the right arrow key on my keyboard to see this in detail. Okay, so this one is pretty close, but on the next frame, it will have the hit calculation and then use the reflection. Let's look at this one maybe. Okay, so this is already reflected. This one is still a bit away here from the surface and on the next frame, it's very close and then reflected. I wanna see if I can find one where we can actually see that we still have this sort of threshold because we're only calculating on each frame and we don't have any sub frames. So this one is pretty close. Also, maybe this one. So we're still away. And on the next frame, we're already bouncing back. So we didn't even, you know, we still have our sort of our threshold in here because the vectors have a, uh, a certain length. And uh, on the next frame, it might already be hitting and it jumps from here to its reflected position, maybe up to here. And we're not even getting all the way to the surface. That's just how simulations work. The only way to um, make this more detailed would be to calculate subframes, which means we could, uh, for example, calculate this whole simulation at a tenth of its speed. Then we can have 10 times the amount of frames. But even then, we still have this issue that we're calculating on a frame and the particle might be moving in between those two frames and the hit might be in between two, two frames. And actually, the hit is always in between two frames because, I mean, the chance of hitting exactly on that frame where it is exactly on that surface are like almost zero. And we can put all of this, of course, into a frame and let's call that uh, collision two. But of course, this node tree is much more simple and easier to read. So I cleaned it up a little so we can actually see where the noodles are going. That's it for this quick update. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. See you soon.